Hey friends, I am a massive Stargate fan. It's hands down my favorite sci-fi thing ever, ever. So back in 2014, when I first heard they were going to be making more of it, I was like, hell yeah. Then I heard it was Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin rebooting the entire franchise, scrapping all of the TV shows and literally everything, including the original movie by doing a brand new film trilogy. And I was like, hell no. But then in 2016, Emmerich announced that due to logistical issues, the trilogy was no longer going ahead. And I was all like, hell yeah, because fuck you for daring to wipe the entire TV saga from the planet. If you were going to bring back Stargate, make it a continuation. Then in 2017, as a part of the Stargate 20th anniversary, it was announced at the San Diego Comic Con that they were going to be releasing a canonical 10 part miniseries in order to put the feelers out there, to see if any interest in Stargate still exists and to basically generate more interest. And I was like, hell yeah. If this goes well, we could be getting more canon Stargate. Awesome. Then we find out that it's gonna be a prequel and I was all like, nah. If you know anything about me, you know I fucking hate prequels, almost with a passion, but it's still Stargate, so I didn't immediately start hating on it. This could be the comeback or the start of the comeback we have all been waiting for for so many years. So having just finished the final episode of Stargate Origins, I will give a breakdown of the events and how it all ties into the SG franchise, then I'll give a bit of a geeky review at the end. Stargate Origins is a prequel to SG-1 and set 10 years after the discovery of the Stargate in Egypt in 1928. So the year is 1938, and our story starts in Cairo, Egypt. The Nazis are moving in and Allied troops are stationed around the globe. Go get them, boys. Catherine Langford and her famous archaeologist father, Paul Langford, have been studying the mysterious ring for the last 10 years, but have learned very little of its purpose or origin. Oh yeah, you might recognize her father, played by actor Connor Trinner, who played Michael Kenmore in Stargate Atlantis. You remember, the wraith that got turned into a human. Obviously there's no connection here, it's just an actor doing more than one role in the Stargate franchise. This is not uncommon for Stargate, by any means. So this series is based around the youthful Catherine Langford, who you should remember from SG-1. She was the one that hired Daniel Jackson to help her with the Stargate program in the first place. Side note, there is a bit of a continuity issue here, as when we first meet Catherine Langford in SG-1, actually we see her in the original movie, but when we get to have a proper chat with her, she says she was 21 in 1945, which would make her birthday the year 1923 or 24, which means she was 4 or 5 years old when the Stargate was discovered, and when she found the Eye of Ra Medallion, which would make her 14 or 15 during the Stargate Origin series. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this chick does not look like a 15 year old. Oh <laughs> well, let's just pretend we can give or take 5 or 6 years here and, and move on. You know what, old people are known to have fickle memories, right? And we do have some memory alteration stuff in Origins too, so maybe that has something to do with it. But probably not, I'm sure it's just a fuck up somewhere along the timeline. In fact, they stuffed it up beforehand anyway. In fact, you know, they changed quite a few things from the original movie into the TV series. Like, like why does she have like a German accent in the movie or something? Or like some European accent and she's clearly American. I don't know. Anyway, they changed a lot of stuff. Doesn't matter. We'll talk about the memory alteration stuff in a bit. So Nazis show up and have discovered how to open the Stargate. Oh no. The head German, Helmut von Schnitzel Nazi, said he procured some diagrams from a felonious little spice merchant in Thailand two years earlier. Apparently, by acquiring this info, he managed to crack the code and open the gate. This is a pretty huge revelation, or retcon, for us Stargate nerds, because as far as we know, the Stargate was first activated by modern humans anyway in 1945 when Catherine's fiance Ernest Littlefield vanished through it. Remember this old naked dude? Then it wasn't activated again until the 90s when Daniel Jackson and Snake Plissken traveled through it to Abydos, which we see in the original film. So at this stage, I was like, y'all done fucked up. The timeline is broken and I'm not happy. As why wouldn't Catherine have told anybody about this or then reopened it earlier and blah blah blah. Well, at the end of Origins, she and her dad get their memories wiped, everyone else is dead or enslaved, so it all kind of works out. It's a pretty huge retcon, but it doesn't really affect the timeline so much, so yeah, I guess it gets a pass, just. So let's talk about the main characters and events. The Nazis kidnap Paul and jump through the gate, where they are greeted by the goddess Aset, who is really a gold, obviously. I wonder why they didn't give them glowing eyes, though. It's kind of weird. I was, I was kind of looking forward to that. But anyway, she's in charge of the mining operations on Abydos. This is where our folks have been transported to, the first planet we see in the Stargate story, other than Earth, obviously. Aset is looking over the 
Nakwada mines while the supreme ruler, Ra, is off battling the other Gua'uld who are trying to take his place at the head of the table, which we learn about much, much later. Remember, Nakwada is a very rare, super dense mineral that greatly amplifies energy. The Stargates are made from this stuff and many races use it for their weapons. It is basically a super sought after mineral and thus whoever controls the mines controls the galaxy. Abydos has a sufficient quantity of the stuff, which is why the Gua'uld are there in the first place. Catherine manages to escape her capture and follows the gang through the wormhole into Abydos with her boyfriend James, a captain in the British army, and a native Egyptian and lieutenant in the British army, Wasif. Here they are met by the Gua'uld warrior, Sir Ket. Also, quit. I don't know how to pronounce any of these names, by the way. So a bunch of shit goes down, and Wilhelm, the, the head Nazi, tries to strike up a deal with a set. You see, a set has been contradicting Gua'uld law, including having a sneaky child, a Harsesis. A Harsesis, or however you pronounce it, is a child born of two Gua'uld, which is strictly forbidden by Gua'uld law, as the Gua'uld pass down their knowledge genetically. So a child born of two Gua'uld would be all-knowing and all-powerful. Remember Shifu, the son of Share and Apophis? He was a Harasesis. As the Goa'uld crave power above all, any child born a Harasesis by Goa'uld law must be killed instantly. So a set has been pushing the boundaries of Goa'uld law and wants more slaves, i.e. more power, and so considers using the Nazi Wilhelm as a source of cheap labor. Wilhelm wants power as well as Nakwada. He actually doesn't care about the Nazis or Hitler. He thinks himself better than them all. A god. Basically, he's on a massive fucking power trip. So he and Aset sort of work out a kind of deal. But the true loyalists, such as Sir Ket, a loyal to the cause Gua'uld, and Ava, a loyal to the cause Nazi, feel like their superiors are conducting, for lack of a better word, treason. So Sir Ket contacts Ra and tells him that Aset is being a cheeky bottom and not following Gua'uld law. Ava thinks that Wilhelm is being a smelly bottom bum face, and after she sees him shoot a fellow German, she shoots the shit out of him. But then she is killed by Sir Ket. Aww. Oh, well, they were all Nazis at the end of the day. So Ra's ship is descending over the temple. He has come to deal with Aset and her treason. Aset is no ordinary girl ward. She feels sympathy for the humans in a way and wants to keep her baby and, and so decides to let the remaining humans go home through the Stargate. But after seeing the great German army, as shown to her by Wilhelm earlier before he died, she sees Earthlings as a threat to the girl ward. She is not as arrogant as the other girl ward or the girl ward that we know, but also she's not quite as evil. So she lets them go, but first wipes their memories with the magic hand thing, the Karakesh. The Karakesh we have seen many times before, and one of its abilities is to instill a long-term, almost permanent form of mind control. Aset, probably realizing her inevitable demise at the hand of Ra, leaves a subliminal message in Catherine's mind to one day in the future lead a team through the Stargate with enough power to defeat Ra. This is actually very interestingly written. You see, when Catherine finally witnesses the fully functioning Stargate, she has no desire to travel through the gate. Now that she knows what it is, and how it works, she feels complete. This little retcon means that she has fulfilled a set's mind control mission and the subconscious burden of making the gate work and sending a team through it. Cool! A set also brainwashed Kesef, this little guy, into becoming the leader of the village of Nagata and implemented in his subconscious the order that he shall help the team that will come back to Abydos to defeat Ra. Kesef is Kesef from the movie. So yeah, another retcon of sorts that it all kind of works out, sort of. You could say a set was almost like a Tok'ra, a good Gua'uld. But, you know, the Tok'ra are much older than her, so we can't really say she was original. She was just another Gua'uld who realized the ways of Ra were pretty shithouse. Unfortunately, Ra bombed the shit out of the temple and the settlement, killing everybody, including Aset and her bebe. Except for Kasuf, as we know, who managed to escape with a subconscious mission. So Catherine and her brainwashed father return to Earth. Everyone else is killed or enslaved, and the Stargate franchise continues on as we already knew. So really, what Stargate Origins has done is shown us that everything that happened, the defeat of Ra and so on, the wills that were set in motion all happened because of Aset, who mind-controlled Catherine and Kasuf years earlier. That's pretty epic, actually. So, that's pretty much everything, man. I've glossed over a few characters and events because they are not of great importance, I suppose, but if you want me to answer anything I've left out, leave a comment and I will try my best. So how did I feel about the series, Stargate Origins? I'm not gonna lie. Although there were a couple of continuity issues, and yes, it was a prequel, which I'm not a fan of prequels, and yes, the budget was kinda iffy, and yes, the story was completely irrelevant as everyone is either dead, brainwashed, or, or whatever, and thus none of this affects the Stargate story in any way whatsoever, and no one 
one will ever know anything. But despite all this, when I heard that Stargate theme music and knew I was watching new Stargate episodes, fuck me. I got goosebumps, man. I'm such a Stargate fan. I honestly believe it is the greatest sci-fi series of all time, and I'm absolutely dying to see more of it. So please be kind to this show, friends. Take it for what it is, a web series, and, and actually a pretty good one considering. Share it, and don't be jerks, because if we give Stargate Origins a bit of love, even if it wasn't perfect, we greatly increase the chance of a proper series coming back. Everyone loves Stargate, so let's share and care, and maybe we can get another series. It probably won't be an Atlantis conclusion, it probably won't be a Stargate universe, Universe conclusion either, but it will be new. Make your thoughts known, share them to the world, tweet at MGM, and let's get some excitement about Stargate again. Let's get a new Stargate show up and running. I would love to see a new SG series set after the events of Universe, set today or in the year 2020, and maybe have the public of Earth aware of the aliens and the world that they live in. Flip it on its head. New adventures, but the public back home know what's going on. New villains, new galaxy even. You can even bring the Wraith into it from time to time. I mean, we still need to kill them off, I guess. I mean, they are aware that Earth exists, so if you were going to do a new series, you would kind of have to to tackle that issue a little bit. I just want to see a continuation of the story we love so much. The Stargate universe, the franchise, is so massive. There are infinite possibilities. What we don't need is another goddamn prequel. This one was okay, but we don't need any more. Let's get something new and exciting happening, people. Just look at TV and movies these days. Science fiction is more widely accepted than it has ever been. If there was ever a time to launch a new Stargate series, it is now. So let's do this, baby! Woo! Thanks for watching, friends.